Hello everybody and welcome to another board game discussion video. Today's topic is all about cheating, but before I get started, if you haven't done so already, please take a look at all my various social media pages as well as my Patreon page. On all of those, you'll be able to interact with myself and my channel in a whole bunch of really cool ways. Getting right into our topic, this is something that I have alluded to over the years several times where I've done discussion videos about following the rules and talked about rule books and how they present the rules and all that kind of thing, but I've never really gone in and talked about cheating and deliberately cheating as an act. So the first thing I wanted to discuss is how I personally define cheating, and I think this is relatively universal, which is the idea of maliciously and deliberately breaking the rules in order to gain some advantage. So we see things where like people bend the rules in order to make games a little bit more fun. That's totally fine as long as everybody agrees with it. We see people who don't really know how to play the game bending the rules or breaking the rules accidentally accidentally, that is not deliberate. It's also generally not malicious. But when you have somebody who is going into a resource pile and they take two instead of just one, or they move a counter incorrectly, deliberately, and all that kind of stuff, that is cheating. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. So the, the main things that I wanted to talk about were sort of two, threefold-ish. The first thing is I wanted to talk a little bit about the psychology of cheating. I'm not a psychologist, but still it's something that's interesting to discuss. And and then I wanted to talk about the things that I do whenever I notice somebody cheating and how I personally handle it. And third, I just wanted to sort of talk about how it affects gaming as a whole. So first and foremost, psychology of cheating. This normally comes from people who refuse to lose. They are people who are extremely competitive and all they want to do is win. If they can't win, then they're the type of people who insist on flipping the table. That's sort of very stereotypical person. And normally it's kind of nice because you can spot them really far away if they are that bad, but at the same time, it's not something that you can often see on the surface. It's something that you really have to look for and you see somebody is doing something incorrectly or maliciously or whatever it happens to be. And finding a motivation for people cheating is really kind of weird because it's like, why are you doing it in the first place? It's supposed to be a fun, friendly game. We're sitting here, we're having a good time, we're interacting. Why would you cheat at a game that has zero consequence for the rest of our lives. It doesn't make any sense. Are bragging rights really that important? I have no idea. And it's something that in particular, I'm curious what you guys think. I mean, whether you've cheated at games in the past or seen people cheat, what are your thoughts on it? How do you deal with it and all that kind of stuff? Which brings us right to my next topic for this particular video of what I have done to people who cheat. So I'm not, a mean person. I don't deliberately go around looking for conflict and all that kind of thing. I have had people who are cheating. I have seen it many times and I really don't like it as many people probably don't. But at the same time, what I'll always do is kind of a three strike rule where I'll say, oh, you can't do that. Or, you know, you took too many cards, you did this, that, and the other. I am i don't like to be an alpha gamer. I don't like that feeling of controlling what everybody does. But at the same time, if you're doing something that gives you an advantage that you should not have, then I'm probably going to call you out on it. I am not particularly competitive. I don't care whether I win or lose at games. I play for the sake of playing and I play for the sake of the experience. But at the same time, I want it to be fair. I want it to be a fair game where we are at the same level, or at least approximately. Certainly there are people who are more or less experienced, but I don't want that to be inflated or deflated artificially by way of cheating where nobody knows exactly what's going on. And so it really frustrates me. And the idea that I'll go into is I'll essentially say, hey, you did this, you shouldn't have done that, it was you know, minor mistake, just wanted to point that out to you. And then ordinarily they correct it. If I see them do it several times, then I just be like, dude, come on, you need to stop that, all right? You gotta stop doing that, you gotta play fair. And it boils down to if I see it typically only once, maybe twice, depending on how, how much I like the person, I'll just stop playing with them. And that's generally how I handle it. If there is somebody that I know to have cheated at games in the past, I'll just avoid playing with them when I go to the FLGS or that kind of thing. So moving into how it can affect the game gaming community in general, this mostly boils down to how it affects your own personal gaming community, how it affects your game nights at your friendly local game store, 
store or even at your own home. And this can um, this can come into a lot of different things. Now, when I talked about following the rules and that sort of idea is that there are people who tend to bend and there are people who are very stringent and both of those are very frustrating, but cheaters just sort of take the cake in this sense. They are breaking the rules, they are deliberately going against what they are supposed to be doing and they know that what they're doing is wrong. And thankfully, I've not really had any issue in my home games, but again, at my FLGS, I've had a few issues with it, so I'm lucky enough that the group is big enough that I can avoid playing with them. The problem then becomes, for you guys or anybody else, do you have issues at your own FLGS or with people who come to you, to your home um, home games? Because then the thing is, if you only have four or five people, then it's very difficult to simply eliminate somebody and no longer invite them. So how do you deal with it? What can you do? A lot of people say, well, you can just talk to them and say, hey, this isn't right. Um, or you can take the psychology approach and just say, why do you do this? Maybe you switch up your games and play a lot more co-op games. So then it's like, yeah, you can cheat, but at the same time, then you're cheating the entire team. It's not about you winning or losing, it's about us winning or losing, and so it's an empty victory in the end. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And at the same time, I've seen uh, a lot of things where, um, like, we'll do a rule wrong or something along those lines. As long as it's a level playing field and everybody is doing something incorrectly, it's not as big of a deal. But at the same time, if it's just one person doing it and they are actively cheating, that is what we are talking about. And so it gets very, very frustrating. And as far as the effect on the gaming community, it's obviously extremely negative because then generally, at least, their reputation will go through the entirety of whatever the local gaming groups are and nobody's gonna want to play with them and so it can be frustrating on all sides because then people don't have others they want to play with and then you have somebody who is actively shunned by the community so it's not good it's just a very bad thing but that said that's enough rambling for me again this is a topic that I thought was really interesting to discuss it's something like I said that I've alluded to in the past but never really faced directly on and certainly there are some games that embrace the idea of cheating. Um, I don't know if I have any up here. I actually have this one. Let me go and grab it right quick. So um, this is one that I got as a gift recently, which is the Monopoly Cheaters Edition. Um, very famously, this has some of the rules that came in as um, sort of house rules that are not actually part of it. So for example, putting the money in the center of the board and taking it at free parking, um, actively being able to steal money and all that kind of thing. In this particular case, you actually have goals of how you can cheat and um, and the idea is that you try to fulfill them. My favorite example of this type of thing is with Illuminati because it very famously has the cheating variant where it literally says you can do whatever you want. You can you follow the rules in terms of how you attack and defend and do all that kind of stuff but you can take extra money from the bank. You can do this that and the other and there, there are like certain things that you can do in order to cheat. So in that context it's like okay but at the same time those games are kind of weird because it's like if we start to actively encourage cheating then does that mean people are going to translate it to other games hopefully not but this is a discussion that we want to have right and so I'm really curious what you all uh, think about this how do you deal with cheaters have you been involved with them have you yourself cheated whether accidentally or deliberately and why um, on top of that when we're talking about games like this that modify themselves in order to accommodate cheating and make it sort of like the dark version or whatever how do we deal with those and in the end what does it mean for the community at large but with that thank you very very much for watching this video I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.